My name is Ray, and I've lived at Dancing Rabbit for four years. I was born and raised in Southern California, and I spent 12 years living in Hollywood. I found myself crying every day, just sad and upset about the state of the world and the level of stress that I had in my life and how many jobs I was working. I had a perfectly fine family. I had nice friends and entertaining things to do, like my career in modeling and my handbag business was getting at the peak of its performance. And that's right when I felt the most stress in my heart and was feeling like anxiety attacks and pains. And I um, started looking for something, and I think I was looking for spirituality. I went to a Conscious Life Expo where I found um, a magazine that led me to a website that was ic.org, and that's Intentional Communities. And they have a directory of all of these communities that I could search through. And as soon as I heard the word Intentional Community or Eco Village, everything in me was like, yes! Yes, yes, that's that's it. Whatever that is, whatever they're doing, that's the way I'm supposed to live. And with that much clarity and certainty, I just went for it. I started selling all my possessions, quitting all my jobs. I packed my car and I drove across country with a list of a few places I was going to visit. And I thought that maybe I would have to like build some um some skills that would make me be an attribute to community. And so the first place I went to was a small farm training center. It's um, a Hare Krishna community in West Virginia. And I met somebody there named Jai who does like facilitation for consensus meetings and decision making. And so he's been to a lot of communities and he was able to share his insight with me and say, you know, Dancing Rabbit should be really high on your list of places to visit. And it wasn't even on my list. So he invited me to Dancing Rabbit's 15 year anniversary. And I came here for that in October and just felt as soon as I arrived and walked onto the land, I was like, oh, this is nice. Oh, you're so nice. All the people I met were so nice and compassionate with, and the way they loved Jai to see him again, they just embraced him. And I looked around like, how can I stay a little longer? How can I visit and come back? And they had a visitor program starting the following Monday. And in that visitor program, I met my partner, Aaron. And so... After the visitor session, we both went our separate ways. We started talking on the phone over the winter. We started talking about building a house together at Dancing Rabbit. And the dreams of building a house just led us to, okay, let's do this. Like, I don't even know you. I've known you for a week, but let's build a house together. <laughs> and we met and kissed on 10-11-12, October 11th, 2012. And then I moved here after procrastinating leaving my friend's homestead for this many days and then this many days longer. And, oh, but then the goats are going to have babies. I want to stay for that, too. And then we're going to do this sweat lodge ceremony, and I want to do that, too. So by the time I arrived at Dancing Rabbit, it was 12-12-12, December 12th, 2012. And that was enough serendipitous to tell me, okay, I'm on the right track even if it's scary to commit to this new relationship and this new community, I'm going to go for it because everything else is telling me like I'm doing the right thing and I'm on track. When I arrived at Dancing Rabbit in December of 2012, I rented a room at the Milkweed Mercantile. I was able to stay in this luxurious straw bale accommodation and feel really comfortable while I was in this really uncomfortable, scary transition time. And... Most people in this village don't suggest arriving in the winter because it's downtime for everybody. They're going to be introverts and not be social. And it turns out that's exactly what I needed. I needed the opportunity to like sleep the winter away and cry my eyes out and like heal from the stress of the wider culture. So I really enjoyed that first winter. I moved into a tent in my front yard here in spring. 
um, my partner Aaron moved here in in April also, and by August we had a timber framing workshop with six students, an instructor, two of our friends, and the two of us. And we learned with all these other students how to do timber framing. And their tuition paid for the instructor to be here to teach us what to do. So then all the students left and the hardest part of timber framing was left to do and we didn't have the tools to do it. It was so hard and so stressful. I cried a couple times. And um, so the timber framing is done and then we had to put the roof on. And of course, whenever anybody is putting a roof on here, there's like wind storms, the caliber of tornadoes. It was so stressful. And then after that, it was kind of smooth sailing. Um, granted, straw bales are super itchy and turns out Aaron is really allergic to them, but it was, it was fine. The straw bale part went really quick and then it was just time to mix some cob, which is sand, clay, and water, and some straw, and apply layers after layers after layers of plaster onto our straw bale walls. So basically, we lived in a tent in the front yard and then at whatever stage the house was at during winter, we moved in. And then at spring, we moved into a tent in the front yard and we finished building our house some more. And then winter time moved back in again. Um, this year was our fourth year at Dancing Rabbit and we decided not to do any building. After three years of building, that was kind of enough. Our home was complete enough for us to feel like, great, this is time for us to focus on our business now. So here at Dancing Rabbit, my partner and I um, make a living by doing a handful of things. Just like when I lived in California, I wore so many hats. And I do that here also, but the things that I do are way more in alignment with what I'm passionate about. So to make a living, I do video production and uh, voiceover work. So I'm able to take some of the skills that I had in California and find a way for them to work in the middle of rural Northeast Missouri. Um, I also had a handbag business in California and I didn't want to be creating something that people had to consume and buy. So now I get hired to make thick insulated curtains for people's homes. It's something that they totally need and they would purchase and it would come from far away and they have this skilled crafter that's here and able to make it on farm. Okay. I also make an income by being the innkeeper at the Milkweed Mercantile. Uh, for six years the Mercantile has been a privately owned business by Kurt and Aline and this year since March We've been having meetings every week to talk about how to turn the business into a cooperative, which means that all of the workers for the cooperative, not only do we make our hourly income, but we also, at the end of the year, we get to share the profits of the business and choose how we're going to reinvest into that business also. Some of the other ways that I make an income here at Dancing Rabbit are a little less obvious. For example, I garden and I grow so much of my own food. I'm not completely self-sufficient, nor is this community, but instead of spending money on food that gets transported from far away, I'm growing a lot of it in my garden and I know what the soil content is and what kind of nutrients are going into my food. Another thing is that I built my own home. So that saved me an enormous amount of money instead of hiring a contractor to do it. And I've learned a skill that can be another trade that if I want to, I could make an income by building homes or building pretty much anything I put my mind to. Next year, I'm going to build a greenhouse and a root cellar. The greenhouse will be just behind you. There's a door and a window there and it'll be a vertical greenhouse. And then the root cellar will be bermed up against my neighbor's house and we're going to share the root cellar and we're going to share a cistern because my neighbor and I, our homes are quite close together and 
instead of putting up a wall and separating our spaces, we're going to share things in between our home. So my neighbor and I are going to share a root cellar and a cistern. A couple of other things that I do here at Dancing Rabbit that I don't necessarily get paid for is uh, a lot of volunteer work for the nonprofit. Dancing Rabbit is both a village and a nonprofit with an educational mission. And so I volunteer on the outreach committee and I organize what events we're going to go to and table at. And either I go and table there or I organize what group of rabbits here are going to go and table there. And I'm the media and education liaison. So whenever media and film crews come to Dancing Rabbit, I host their visit here and help with their schedule of who to interview and where to eat and where to stay and where to find drinking water. And then educational groups, we bring at least two to four um, high school and college groups to Dancing Rabbit every year. And I organize where they're going to stay and what classes they're going to take and who's going to teach those classes and who's going to feed the students while they're here. One of the things I really appreciate about Dancing Rabbit and intentional community is that we are a self-governing system. I actually have a voice in this community. I, ac I also have a secret. My secret is that I've never voted. Since I was 18, I registered to vote, and every year I read this stupid information about who and how and what I'm supposed to vote for, and even after studying, I feel like I don't have an educated enough know-how to put my vote in any place that's going to matter, and in the last half a dozen years, it doesn't even feel like it matters if I vote because it's like voting for bad or really bad. So I really appreciate that at Dancing Rabbit, we have this consensus decision-making process. Granted, right now, as of two years ago, we've started transitioning out of full group consensus and into something that's more like a village council. And it's not like representatives that are representing my vote. It's, um, it's a council of people that represent the dynamic that exists in this community. And that council of people get together every Sunday and they get to discuss topics that are up for the village and come to decisions on them. Now, I, as a member of this village, if I have some input I want to add to that conversation, I am fully invited to go and be present in that meeting and have a voice. And if I feel like I don't actually have an opinion in this topic or I'm fine which, with whichever way it turns out, I don't have to attend every meeting. And so it frees up how I want to show up in community and, and where do I want to spend my volunteer energy. The Village Council consists of seven people and half of those people rotate every two years and they could re-up for a second two-year term. And so there's some other details like the slate that gets formed. We evaluate those slates and see that each option of people has a balanced group of male and female diversity, of economic diversity, and of skill levels of who holds what types of skills. So far, the Village Council is working great here at Dancing Rabbit because once we grew to a size of more than 30 or 40 people, we can't fit that many people in a room anymore, nor can we accommodate that many schedules. Not only do we have the village council to help govern our village, we also have a lot of volunteer committees that many people are on many different committees. So after the village council comes to a decision on a topic, they look at the pieces and the components of that decision and see what parts need to be held and further processed. And then they send those topics to the appropriate committee who will continue to work on that project. I think my favorite thing about Dancing Rabbit is getting to see the full group come together. 
When I see all 50 people that I live with and that I love in a full cir circle together, maybe we're holding hands or singing a song or eating a meal together, or we're in a weekly meeting together where we're discussing topics and tactics of how to get the week to flow smoothly. I love feeling the energy of that whole group being together. I love looking around the room and remembering all the qualities of why I love those people. Every Sunday we have a, a WIP, a week in preview meeting, and we get to look at the week that's coming up ahead and talk about things like announcements. Maybe I'm having a block party because it's my birthday and I want to invite all of you, and so I'll make that announcement at the week in preview meeting or it's just some items that I cleaned up out of my house and they're up for grabs. Or maybe it's an announcement about friends that are visiting and coming on farm, or rabbits that are going to be off farm for the week, or um, trips and travel that we're gonna go and do using the vehicles. We have two vehicles that run on biodiesel. We have a pickup truck, an electric leaf, and a tractor. And so in order for us to share those vehicles cooperatively, we need to talk about it every week and see who's going where and when. And then that really actually has been such a blessing to see that I don't have to drop everything I'm doing in the middle of construction to be able to run to town to go to the hardware store. When I could just look at the calendar and see who else is going and ask if they have enough time to be able to pick up a thing for me or enough space in the vehicle. And then it's great to be able to share the vehicles and the trips that way. Currently, we don't have any of our founding members living here at Dancing Rabbit. They've all gone on to continue their careers. I think that they felt like, okay, this is a village. It's going to go on and grow and be a village, even without me there to nurture it. And so they've felt like, I still need to make an impact and a difference in this world. I've already done it this way through the eco-village. What else can I do? And they've really pushed their envelope and their limits to see how their career could continue to protect the environment. And so our last two founding members that were living here at Dancing Rabbit, um, left a year and a half ago on a sabbatical where perhaps they might be right back but it seems like things are working really well where they are and they're gonna continue with their career but they're working for organizations that are working towards changing legislation so that environmental um, policies can exist in legislation. Personally, I was greatly impacted by our last two founding members leaving Dancing Rabbit because I ate in the same food cooperative as they did. They welcomed me with warm embrace when I arrived here and helped me to transition into feeling confident here. And perhaps that's, that's beautiful. They've maybe nurtured me to be somebody who can help to support this village in thriving and I am doing that now. But uh, I'm also continuing the food cooperative that they started and entrusted to me, and uh, I appreciate that I get to support this community in that way. There are 25 natural buildings here at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, and that is the biggest collection of natural buildings in the Midwest. We're located in the Midwest because there aren't any building code regulations here. So we're able to experiment with natural building in a way that we couldn't do on the East or West Coast. There's only one Cobb structure here at Dancing Rabbit because Cobb is not nearly as insulative as Straw Bale. And so the one building that is here, if it was located in Northern California or Oregon, it would perform great. But in Northeast Missouri, where we have very severe climates, it's not highly efficient. It requires too much energy input to keep that structure at a comfortable temperature to live in. 
A straw bale home is going to have 18 inches of a straw bale insulation. And there's going to be three or four or five inches of plaster on either side of that straw bale. Now, as the sun is warming one side of that plaster, there's 18 inches of insulation before it starts to warm the wall on the inside of my house. And so as I'm keeping a cool temperature in here, it's cooling this layer of plaster, but not getting affected by that warm layer of plaster on the other side. A lot of the homes at Dancing Rabbit have earth contact. And that's really important because the earth wants to stay at a pretty constant 55 degree temperature. And so my house is able to stay at a really comfortable temperature as long as I do the manual labor of um, rise, raising and lowering the curtains every day and opening windows at night. It's pretty labor intensive, but it's such an easy way to heat and cool my house with very little energy input just by doing those things and having an earth contact. My house stays at an incredible 64 or 5 degree temperature. Every time I walk in my door, the first words out of my mouth is, oh, it feels good in here. So there are a few different types of natural buildings, but I would say the biggest contrast to a natural building is a green construction. Compared to conventional construction, green construction is using very conventional looking materials, but they're harvested sustainably. They're very low or zero vox in the paints that are used. And they're reclaimed items, whether they came out of a house that was being demolished or a schoolhouse that was being demolished or whether they were just leftover construction materials from an abandoned project, green construction uses all that spectrum of materials to make a building that is very highly performing, very well insulated, and looks really conventional. Dancing Rabbit Eco Village is designed with a European style densely clustered village. So all of our homes are really close to our neighbors so that the walking distance is really convenient, especially because we share infrastructure and resources. If our homes are densely clustered, then all of us can equally access that shared infrastructure in the middle. And then here at Dancing Rabbit, we have our gardens on the outskirts of the village and then our agricultural like animal uh, land on the outskirts of the gardens. So I think of it as a permaculture design on a community scale instead of that individual lens. I can think of a couple of things that I would change about Dancing Rabbit even though I love it so much here. I don't like it when people leave. I fall in love with my neighbors and it hurts my heart so deeply when they move away. I also would change the size of our village. I want more people to live here. The amount of community volunteer work that we all have to do would greatly decrease if we had more people to do that volunteer work. And so the quality of life for everyone here would increase if we had more people to spread out that work. Another thing I might like to see different about Dancing Rabbit is its location. I understand why we're located in such a rural rolling hills and prairie and northeast Missouri, but if we could be closer to a big city so that there was a population that our farmers could sell our produce to and our artists could sell their wares to, that would make a huge difference in our economy here. We have a lot of cooperatives here at Dancing Rabbit, especially food cooperatives. It's one of the biggest ways that we can cook and consume more sustainably. By having a food cooperative, I free up so much personal time where I get to do other things instead of cooking. If I have six people in my food kitchen, then I'm only cooking once a week. And I also heat up leftovers for lunch the next day. And then breakfasts we eat on our own individually. So 
in our food kitchen, we order some things in bulk, like getting a whole 50 pound bag of oats and a 25 pound bag of chickpeas and garbanzo beans and lentils, things that we're gonna use a lot of often. But then things that we don't use quite as often, we have the public market grocery store where my kitchen is able to share bulk items with other food co-ops around here in a really clean environment and it's easy to access and it's open 24 hours and so I can restock my kitchen at whatever time I choose to be cleaning the kitchen at. It's awesome. I would like to see Dancing Rabbit expand in the future in a handful of ways. One of them being like the types of cooperatives that we have. I want to see an agriculture cooperative and a large-scale farming cooperative and uh, an alternative um, transportation cooperative. Maybe that looks like electric assist bikes or something. I would love to see diversity here at Dancing Rabbit. I recently did this project called Rabbit of the Week where we got to talk to the village about ourself and that way the village gets to know us better. And I was looking back at the pictures of my circle of friends and I considered myself Portuguese when I lived in California. And now I consider myself Caucasian when I'm around all these other Caucasians. And I would really love to see ethnic diversity, cultural diversity, economic diversity here at Dancing Rabbit. I think the most important thing to me about community and sustainability is that people find a way to make it work for them in their locations. I'm not saying that every single person has to come and live at Dancing Rabbit, but I need more communities to exist. I need folks to not reinvent the wheel, but to have connection with community and network so that it's a smooth transition to creating more community. And I need folks to learn from our community and take away the parts that work for them in their neighborhoods and be able to spread those messages in that way.